Hello, in this video we are going to be looking at working with the dbt power user extension on vs code how to um, implement attaching it or installing it on vs code um, for a dbt project running um, within a virtual environment on vs code and so the first thing we're going to do now is to um, go through our system and look for an existing dbt project that we have installed there so we go to our desktop and then we're going to click on analytics and select that folder. This is a this is a dbt project as you can see from the tree from the file tree that already exists um, on its own with models, intermediate staging and host of other things. So our goal now the first thing we're going to do is to create a virtual environment. One of the reasons for creating a virtual environment is so that you can use different versions of dbt and different packages um, within specific environments in such a way that um, these packages depending on certain dbt versions don't clash with each other and then you have issues with regards to their installation or with your dbt project. So the first thing we're doing is going to our command line and since we're already um, within the, the directory of our projects, we take a step back and go to the desktop. The reason we're doing this is because we want to install um, or create this virtual environment um, within our desktop and not within a particular folder on the desktop. So we want, um, the, we want the environment to be persisting or created on our desktop. And so we say Python dash M V E N B, and then we name the virtual environment. You can name your environment SQL, you can name it Python, you can name it anything you want to, but for the purpose of this um, video, we'll name it dbt. And so Python dash M V E N V dbt. So it's going to take um, just a few seconds to um, be created. Now that we've created our virtual environment, we want to activate the virtual environment so that we can work within that virtual environment and install dbt within that virtual environment. And so for that, we, we call the name of our folder because we're already on the desktop. And so the name of the folder is dbt. So we say dbt and then backslash, we say scripts, another back, backslash, and then we say activate.bat. And so when we do this, our virtual environment has been instantiated. Another way of looking at this is to come to this folder here called dbt which is the virtual environment that we created and again you can see the folder within its scripts and then this activate.bat so this is where this is and this is what we use um, to activate um, the environment of vs code so coming back to vs code now that we have created and instantiated the environment, we can go back to our folder, our dbt project folder, analytics, and then we can say, or we could even go back and say, um, we want to install dbt postgres, for example. We just want to install dbt postgres because we're using a postgres database, for example. Um, so we'll let that run and have that installed. Now, while this is running, we also um, want to let VS Code know that we are working within a virtual
virtual environment um, because there's a warning here that says select interpreter. And so we want VS Code to know that we are running a Python environment that we created called DBT um, for this project. And the way to do that is to select an interpreter. And so we come here and we go to the command palette. And then we say Python select interpreter. And so right now there, there's a Python installed 3.9.10 with its own virtual language environment called VNV. There's another Python installed 3.9.13 with, with its own virtual environment called Base. But we're looking for um, the Python installed within our DBT virtual environment. And so we have to look for it. And the way we do that is to go to our desktop again. We come back to our DBT environment folder. We go to scripts. And this time we go down and then we click on python.w.exe and we run that. Now we come back to our command palette, click on Python select interpreter again. It's supposed to show here. So just to go through that again, dbt scripts. So once that is done, we can come back to the command palette, go to the Python interpreter, and now we have a dbt popping up. So this is the environment we are looking for, Python, installed with the dbt environment this dbt environment that we have named and so we click on that and that's what we are using and vs code knows now that that's what we are using for this project so we've installed um dbt postgres for this particular project we can go to cd analytics let's run dbt debug just to be sure everything is with uh, profiles.yaml file and that we're um, up to date. And yes, you can see here um, everything is okay with our connections and all of that. So now we are moving to the extension aspect. And so we go to the extensions icon here. And so we want to look for the dbt power extension. And so we just type in dbt here. And so this is dbt power user. This is the one we are going for. There are also similar extensions like the dbt osmosis one, dbt osmosis power user, which is quite similar, but we'll be focusing on this for now. So um, first of all, we're going to uninstall this as it was already installed on my laptop before. And so now that it's uninstalled, we're going to install it for the first time, as it were, installing it. And now that it's installed, we want to make sure that it connects and it's persisting, especially with regards to our projects. So one of the ways to do that is to look at the instructions here with regards to associations and file associations and so we're going to go to the file association um, within the settings to get this done and so we go to settings and go then we go to the text editor here and then we click on files and so we come here and we say Here, sorry about that. We click on add item and then we say star.sql changer-sql and click on say okay. The second thing you can also do as per the instructions is to come to your settings and look for the Python interpreter visibility and so that's what we're going to do um, 
since we're here, Hypothesis and Python interpreter. And so we come, you come to this area here, and then you're supposed to make sure that it's on always. Once you click on that, it's still not um, showing up. And so that can be an issue sometimes. So we'll close our folder and then close our VS code. And then we're going to click on VS code again. Then we're going to go back and open our folder desktop analytics. It's loading and boom. DBT Power User has been installed. You can see the DBT icon with regards to the different models, staging models and intermediate models for the project. You can take this up and then we have a new feature here, which is the lineage view. I'm going to take this off now. And so we can see this is the lineage view, which is a recent feature that was added to this package. Um, we are currently on the STG underscore product details um, SQL model. And so this is obviously um, showing the lineage view of this entire um, model. And so you have the current node in purple, which is where we are. We have the children of this model, which is int product details or intermediate product details. And then we have tests um, that are built into this staging product details uh, model. We have the not null test, we have the unique test, and then we have the, um, the source, obviously, which is the parent of this staging model. But because this is a staging model, not there isn't necessarily a parent model of it, but there is a source which is regarded as a parent um, to this particular um, model. There are also certain features here um, with regards to the power extension where you can execute your dbt. You can also build the dbt, which is with the dbt build command. Um, you can also run your dbt model and you can also run dbt tests. So these things will appear on the upper right hand corner of your um, um, VS code. So that's a wrap for this video. Um, thank you very much.